Last year, I released a video on how to essentially take a scrap piece of wood on site, attach it to your miter saw as an auxiliary fence, and then use spring clamps to make stop locks so I can make repeatable cuts anytime I wanted, no matter where I was on location with that saw. I got a lot of feedback on that video. Some of it was nice, some of it was not so nice, and some of it was a little disturbing. I really hope that guy is okay. But it made me wonder, what would happen if I took all this feedback, all these thoughts, and incorporated it into one single build? The mother of all portable miter saw stands. Here's my design criteria. The thing that was most important for me in the first build is also the thing that's most important to me in this build. And that is, even on location, I need to be able to set this whole system up in under 60 seconds. Now, the criteria that I'm going to remove from the original build is that it doesn't need to be built from some scrap wood that you can find on a job site. We're gonna build most of this in the workshop before we take it out into the field. We're also gonna add a bunch of extra bonus features that are more along the lines of what you'd find in one of those big behemoth builds you see in all those YouTube videos on how to build a miter station in your giant workshop. Well, for those of us that don't have giant workshops or need to take the saw with us outside the workshop, this is to address that need. Here's what we're gonna add in this build video. We are going to add stops, put on some T-Track, add an auxiliary fence, add power distribution, install a magnetic tool rack, put in a phone charger, and a few other surprises that you'll have to wait till the end of the video to see. That's gonna be a lot of work, so let's get started. First, I broke down a two by four foot piece of three quarter inch MDF, and I essentially just cut it in half, making each side 12 inches. My total wing width would be 12 inches when I had them installed, but of course you can modify this to fit whatever you think is best for your saw setup. Now MDF is a great material to make these wings out of because of its inherent flatness. However, MDF also is not entirely super durable, especially if it gets wet. To protect it from scratches, water, etc., I'm gonna cover this with a piece of laminate. Now what I'm using is PVC wall paneling that I found at the box store, but you can use any kind of countertop laminate that you can find to cover your MDF with. The type of covering you use is also a good chance to customize what your final station is gonna look like, so you can be creative here. All you have to do is cut the laminate out slightly bigger than the size of the wings, and don't worry about the overhang because we will cut that down later. The next step is to just roughly sand the part that you'll stick to the MDF, and that's just to give it a good surface for adhesion, and then clean it off with some mineral spirits to make sure you get all the gunk and the dirt off that might impede its ability to stick. To attach the laminate to the MDF, I'm using contact cement, and this is pretty easy. You just roll it onto each side, wait for it to dry, and then stick the two pieces together. Now you gotta be a little careful when you're sticking the two pieces together because once it touches, it will lock itself in place. So the easiest way to do this is to put a couple of sticks in between the surfaces, line everything up, and then pull them out one by one as you smooth the laminate down onto the top of the MDF. To make sure all the bubbles are out and that everything lays flat, I use a roller and just go over the whole surface until I feel that everything is flat to the touch. Now for the bottom and the sides of the wings, I didn't feel it necessary to put down a laminate. Though I did want to protect them because this is a portable miter stand setup and this will be outdoors at some point or in other places where things can get spilt on it. So I just used a white enamel paint to match the PVC top that I put on it. To trim the laminate top down, I used a quarter inch chamfer bit that was just a little bit below the plate of the router and flush trim it right up to the edge of the MDF. Using the little bit of uh, chamfer, that took the sharp edges off and kind of gave it a small bevel just so it doesn't catch anything as things move across it, including, you know, your skin. 
I'm going to install a piece of T-Track in each of the wings to hold the stop block. Take the wing, line it up with the edge of the miter saw, and then use the stop block to measure against the inside fence to make sure I have enough room to put it in. Once I had it there, I just marked the center of my stop block and then roughly outlined where the three quarter inch groove is going to go to hold the T-Track. Now, it just doesn't have to be perfect because I'm gonna build a little leeway into the mounting brackets to adjust that, but it should be pretty close. With all that marked out, I'm gonna take a straight edge and lock it down on my board, making sure to compensate for the offset of the router plate to the router bit on my router. You can see here the marking for the router is further down than the actual straight edge is. And once that's locked in place, I'm going to go ahead and route out that three quarter inch groove that's going to install my T-Track. The depth of this groove is only one half inch, so I'm able to do this in a single pass. Now remember, this is MDF and MDF kicks out a hell of a lot of dust that's not good for you. So make sure you're wearing your safety equipment, including goggles, and a respirator. You'll also notice that I routed in a little bit on the other side before I went all the way across, and that's just to make sure I didn't get any tear out. Once the groove is cut, again, for various reasons, including your own um, safety and health, vacuum up all that nasty uh, MDF dust, and then take a piece of sandpaper and just lightly sand down the inside edges of that to create a little bevel. Laminates can get a little bit sharp, and if you run your hands against it, you really don't want to hurt yourself. Also, it makes it much easier to get the T-Track in, which you want to have a nice snug fit on. So as you can see here, I'm just lining up the T-Track, and then I'm just going to take a rubber mallet and tap it down into place. The final step is just to use some wood screws to put into the T-Track and all its little holes to make sure it doesn't come out and it stays flush with the surface. When you're doing this, make sure, especially if the T-Track you purchased comes with screws, that they were not too deep and you wouldn't want those screws poking through. So for this three quarter inch board with the laminate, I used half inch screws. Now that we finished building the wings, the next thing to do is put together the attachment points that are going to attach the wings to the stand. I could make something and bolt it onto the stand, but I found that it was much easier just to buy some of these material supports off of Amazon. These are fairly cheap. They only cost about 25 bucks a piece. To get the whole mounting plate and have all the adjustments, I decided to go with these. Right off the bat, we're gonna start by taking this apart. Now we don't need the old material stop since we're gonna build a new one into the wings. We'll start by taking that off. To do this, I'm gonna need my pliers. Just need to use the pliers to hold on to the nut on the inside of the guide and then use an Allen key to remove the screw. We no longer need this guide so we can pull it off. There's also these little spacers. If you wanna reuse this and put this back on later, make sure you save these. The next thing is we're gonna to need to take the bolts off this so we can remove the whole top. Now you're gonna to wanna to be really careful with these nuts and bolts because you will need these later. Now that we got the top plate removed, it's time to do a little drilling. I'm gonna use my drill press to do this, but you could really use any kind of metal drill bit and um, a regular drill to do it. You start by marking off the center of the metal plate that makes the top of the stand. My combo square was set to mark the middle, but I just kept it set the same way and then marked the same distance off of each side to make an X for where I'm going to drill the hole for the bolts. I use my punch tool to put a little divot in the middle of each one of those X's. This will help me line up the drill bit and will keep it from drifting when I'm drilling the hole. Now this is useful even if you're using a drill press, but it's especially useful if you're going to be using a hand drill. A wandering drill bit can mess up your work, but it can also be really dangerous, so it's worth taking this extra step as a precaution. I'm using a step bit to drill this hole in the plate, so I will drill it down to the quarter inch mark. Before starting to do the drilling, I wanna make sure it's lined up with the little dimple in the metal I made, and I also wanna make sure all my drill settings are correct for drilling through metal, and that means making sure the speed is set correctly. I clamped everything down to keep it from moving, and then very carefully, began drilling through the metal. You note that I pick up the bit a couple of times just to make sure it is drilling in the right place and also to keep it from overheating. Drilling the second hole was just a repeat of the process. I just flipped the plate around and lined it up again. 
You're using the step drill bit leaves, these tiny burrs on the inside surface of the plate. So I just filed that down with a metal file until it was smooth on the inside. And then I filed that up with a round file just to get off any additional burrs and make sure it was smooth all the way through the hole. I'm attaching each bracket about an inch and a half inside of each wing. And this is to give me enough room that once I insert the wing onto the miter saw sand, I have enough room to operate the bolts and the different screws to make the adjustments. Once I have those marks in place, I can lay our plate that we drilled out over the top and mark off where the screws will need to go. Use a center punch to mark the centers of your circles to give a guide for the drill bit. You can use a drill press for this next part, but I found it much easier just to use a right angle drill guide and a bit that matched my threaded insert. Then I just lined up the drill with the little divot I made with the center punch and used that to start my hole, only drilling down about a quarter of an inch because I wanted to be careful not to drill through the entire MDF before I marked the depth on my drill. I took out my threaded insert and I measured off its depth by putting a little piece of tape on my drill bit. I then drilled the rest of the way through the hole using the starter part to hold the drill straight until the tape touched the top of the MDF panel and that's how I knew I was deep enough for the insert. I did a test fit by screwing in the insert to make sure it bottomed out in the correct location. And as you'll see, it doesn't quite go all the way down and that's because of the little lip on the top of the insert. I checked it against the plate to make sure that they lined up. I then removed those threaded inserts so that I could go back and drill countersinks so that little lip had a place to go and that when I finally screwed in the metal plate, it would fit flush to the surface of the MDF. Before putting each threaded insert back in, I added a little CA glue to the side of each one so that when I screwed it in, it kind of distributed through the hole and helped lock the insert in place. With the countersinks, you can now see that the threaded inserts fit flush with the board. Mounting the plate was super simple. All I needed was some bolts that matched the threading on the threaded inserts and a lock washer. Thread those into the inserts, tighten them down with an Allen key. This really locked the plate into place and it would not budge. Next up was to reinstall the mounting bracket. This is really simple since all the hardware was saved when we took it apart. Plate in place, slide its bolts back in, make sure that it slid freely, and then put back on the washer and lock nut on the other side and tighten them down. I'm gonna make them a little tighter than they were when I took them off. This is to make it so that the bracket can still move back and forth, but it binds up a little bit. This will make it easier for me to line up the wings with the miter saw when I do the final install. You can see how the bracket slides back and forth easily, but does have a little resistance. This next part is optional, but it does show the nice part about using the aluminum extrusion in the MDF board. If you want to trim these wings down to a custom size, you can just go slowly and actually use your miter saw to build your miter saw wing. Just make sure to sand down the edges after you cut it to make sure you get rid of any sharp pieces that might be sticking out. Here's the quick install. These would normally be pre-built already, so once you get on site, all you have to do is slide the wing into place and then tighten down the adjustment knobs. This first one just locks the support mount in place and this will hold the wing tight up against the miter saw. The second ones are the height adjustment and there's a knob on either side. So you're just gonna hold the wing so it's flush with the top of the miter saw plate and then tighten both of these knobs down to hold it in place. Now, if you remember, we left these two nuts loose before so that we can move the wing across the top of the mounting bracket. In this case, once you have the wing set to where you want it to align with the front of the miter saw, you can tighten these all the way down and that will lock the wing in place. The final adjustment we need to do is to flatten the wing with the base of the miter saw. I'm just clamping down a level that I know is flat and then I'll go to the rear mount, the one that we didn't make any modifications to, and I'm just gonna use that one to raise up the back side of the wing until it just comes in contact with the level. The front mount is what holds everything locked into place and keeps it from moving. This rear mount is just there to support the wing and keep it flat with the miter saw base. So once we have everything flat, we can just tighten this down and we don't need to do any further adjustments to this part of the mount. Oh, hey. Thanks for getting this far in the video. Good news is we're through the tough part. Everything is built and we got it all together. 
we're about to move on to the really fun part and add some accessories to this miter stand setup so that we can customize it for the way we work. So everything from here on out is optional. It's just what I did to my stand to make it right for me. Take um, what I did as inspiration and suggestions and you know, do whatever you want to yours. This part is cosmetic. I'm gonna add a black edge banding to the front of the wing. This just makes it look a little bit nicer, but it also gives me a chance to practice putting edge banding on and shop furniture is a great, great way to practice things you don't do very often. This type of edge banding just gets ironed on and it's fairly cheap, so this is a nice detail to add. The iron heats up the glue and makes it sticky and once you go across the whole thing, it is stuck to the wood. All you need to do is clip it off at the end to make it flush. Now I'm gonna add the stop lock and this is by far the most important feature of this whole setup for me. Using this, I can make precision cuts over and over again with no variation. This is great for doing anything from repeatable framing cuts down to fine furniture making where you might wanna have four table legs that are exactly the same size. Now having a single T-track is nice, but having an auxiliary fence full of slots for accessories is even nicer. This is 20 series aluminum extrusion and it's available in a variety of sizes and it's easy to install. Line it up with the miter saw fence, mark the front and the back of the extrusion. Then I could take my ruler and just mark the middle of those two lines. And now that I had the middle marked, which is where the screw is gonna go, I just set my combination square to that distance. I could use that combination square to make sure the holes are all the same distance, parallel with the front of the wing. The first thing I'm gonna do when I'm installing these is I'm gonna slide the extrusion all the way to the right and mark a hole there. And then I'm gonna slide it all the way to the left and mark another hole there. That way I can adjust the extrusion by sliding it back and forth across the entire wing without having one of the screws pop out. I marked the center with a little divot using my punch to keep the drill bit from slipping. And then I use my 90 degree drill block to drill a hole straight through the wing for the bolts. I'm using M5 hammer style bolts and washers and thumb screws connected from the bottoms to attach the extrusion to the MDF base. If I ever wanna remove the extrusion or just adjust its placement across the left-right orientation of the wing, I can just loosen these up and slide it back and forth or slide it completely off. I already showed you how I installed the stop lock to the T-Track. Here you can see how you can use this T-Track stop lock along with one connected on the extrusion so that you can have two separate blocks and actually cut two different lengths of material simultaneously by just lifting the one on the extrusion up and then sliding back to the other one. You could also use multiples of the extrusion style stops and create a whole bunch of repeatable stops for all different lengths of cuts you might need on a project. A quick note, if you want to use standard quarter 20 T-track bolts with the series 20 extrusion, you're going to either need to sand or file down the sides to make them narrower so they fit in the smaller track. Let's take the wings back off and put them down on the bench so we can do some work on the underside. When you're working in a small shop or on location, workspace is sometimes difficult to come by, especially a place where you could do things like plug in chargers or charge your phone, that kind of stuff. Now, these wings, they provide a decent amount of work surface. And now earlier when I added the extruded aluminum accessory fences, you might have wondered why am I adding those and then just cutting this workspace in half. The reason is it gives me some functionality as far as being able to add some stops and other accessories. They're also removable giving me the entire space, but it also separates out the front workspace where pieces of wood are being cut from this back area, essentially creating a shelf. I thought a great idea would be to have some additional power options back there, and that's why I got this power block, um, power strip with surge protection on it. Now, surge protection is kind of important, especially if you're using dirty power outside and you're charging sensitive things like your phone. You're gonna wanna have something maybe to protect that. I got the surge option and I'm gonna mount this to the bottom of the right wing on my miter saw. Now, you can mount this anywhere where you think works best, but typically I have less stuff on the right side than the left side. The reason I'm mounting it on the bottom is because it provides some protection from the elements falling down on it. It's also less likely to collect dust in places I don't want it to, like inside the holes for the receptacles. I just measured this out where I wanted it to be, and based on the block I have, which gives me a lot of different options for plugs, it also has some standard USB ports as well as a USB-C style port. 
I'm just gonna mount it to roughly the middle of my wing. Areas we wanna avoid. We don't wanna put it anywhere that's in line with these two bolts. This is where the auxiliary wing mounts down. We also don't wanna make it so that it is behind the T-track because when I put these screws in to mount it, it would go up and hit the T-track underneath. I have it sufficiently back towards the rear end of the wing, but I also had it far enough forward so that I can reach under and easily hit the switch to turn it on and off when I want to. This installs pretty easy. All I need to do now is lay it down and put the screws in. Now, another great thing to use this for is when you're on a location, having a spot to line up all your chargers and charge your different batteries is kind of important as well. So I can use the back edge of this wing to lay my chargers down and have it ready to charge batteries when I need them. Now, before I move on to this next upgrade, I just want to let everyone know that I am going to put a link to my Amazon affiliate store and inside the store, there'll be a link to this specific project where you can find a list of all these items so that if you're interested in using any of them, you can feel free to purchase them from my site. It doesn't cost any more. It just helps out the channel a little bit or buy something similar if you find something that works better for you. This is a induction charging disc and this will allow you to wirelessly charge your phone. So I thought it might be a great idea if you're going to go all out and build the portable miter stand that, you know, trumps all portable miter stands, it should be able to charge your phone. This installs super easy. All you do is mount the disc to the bottom of the wing and then you can lay your phone on the top side once it's all installed and it will charge as long as it's plugged into the power thing we just put in. I'm gonna put this on the edge in the corner, kind of out of the way for charging, but also to make it so that if I need to remove the puck, it's very easy to reach around this edge and just pull it out. And I'm just gonna use the same self-tapping wood screws that I use to mount the surge protector. Put the puck in, plug that into one of the available outlets, run the wire into the charger. And then all I need is a cable tie to clean this up or the zip tie will work just as well. I just couldn't help myself. So I added LEDs to the bottom of the wing as well. And I could say I did this to add additional workspace lighting, but the reality is I just wanted to have the capability of uh, having a disco. Work hard, play hard. Before I reinstalled the wings, I upgraded the fences that came with the DeWalt Midasaur with these aftermarket ones from FastCap. They're a little bit taller, but they also have these crown stops that can get removed from the back of the fence and then moved over to the front and locked down so that if you're cutting crown molding, you can just set it up, lock it down, and cut away. Now, these are a big improvement over using the old fences because on the old fence, if I wanted to use a crown stop, I had to attach it from the side of the saw and doing that meant I had to remove the wings I just created. Now it came time to reinstall the wing with all the electronics installed and you can see it's a pretty simple process. You just line up the front mount with the track, then slide it forward. I double checked the back mount to make sure it wasn't interfering with any of the electronic devices like the charger and then I slid it all the way forward till it made it up with the miter saw. Then I just had to tighten up the bolt and the wing install is complete. As part of this upgrade, I really wanted to improve the dust collection. Miter saws are really dirty and as you can see, stuff would get all over the place. So what's the point of doing all this work just to have debris flying all around? Another problem with the DeWalt dust collection on the saw is that with the hose connected, it really sticks far out of the back of the saw, making it take up a lot of space in the shop. It extends the back almost another nine inches. To solve this problem, I decided to remove the factory dust extraction system and replace it with an upgrade from Shop Nation. The Shop Nation kit came with a whole bunch of 3D printed parts that were pretty easy to assemble and install on the saw. I was pretty happy with this upgrade, both from the perspective of the additional clearance I gained at the back of the saw, but also the enhancement in the dust collection was pretty dramatic as you can see in these before and after shots. On the back of the auxiliary fence, I decided to add these magnetic tool holders. And these just screwed on to the track using the M5 bolts I had for working with this Series 20 extrusion. And they gave me a great place to attach loose accessories and hardware that I was using while I'm working at the station. 
It's also where I attach a lot of the tools that I'm using a lot on projects so that they don't get lost. This is really great if you're on location and you don't want to drop things in the grass and lose them. I even went as far as getting this little tin case to hold all my little knickknacks and accessory parts. And this will attach to the back of the magnet as well without falling off. And here's the spot where the phone charger was. And as we can see, it works. <sighs> that was a lot of work, but I hope you enjoyed the video. So while I play back some clips of all the features we added to make this the mother of all miter saw stands, why don't you take a second and um, leave me a comment. Tell me what other features you might want to see in a build like this or what you would have wanted to do differently. Thanks for watching and I hope you master your own miter stand and you got some great ideas from this video. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and um, sign up for notifications so whenever I come out with new content, you know where to find it.